Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 33. So in episode 32, we designed this sub right here. Now this is based off of a UM12 in a three and a half foot cubic box that's net tuned to 18.5 hertz. And we're going to go with a slot port and there's our dimensions for our port at 39.77 inches long. So now what we need to do with this information, you know, now that we, we are we have confirmed that our port velocity is in check, so we're not going to have port chuffing. We're not going to exceed X max, you know, half an octave above tuning. We know that we have a peak right there, but we know how much power we can deliver and still, you know, protect our driver so we don't bottom it out. All that's done. So now we're ready to design our box. Now at this point, you know, the way I've always done it, I'll just get the scratch pad out and I know I need 3.5 cubic feet. Uh, you know, I'll take my vent, figure out my area per inch, and then multiply it times inches, you know, to get my displacement from my port. And then I'll have a little bit of displacement from my driver and from my bracing. And so I'll get a gross volume, and then I'll just start designing my box, how I want it to look. Well, I mean, for this, that's probably not something everyone wants to do. I enjoy doing that. You know, and I may spend a few hours or a few days looking at different styles of boxes. It just depends on, you know, what I'm trying to do or how fancy I'm trying to get. But for this, I went and searched some websites that'll be a little easier for everyone to use. And actually, I found something that has a pretty good 3D modeling of what we're going to be building or whatever we want to design. So it's subbox.pro forward slash en for English. So it's obviously a foreign website, and sometimes you'll see some Russian pop-ups down here at the middle. So I'm not sure I would click on those. But anyway, so, you know, there's different alignments you can build. For the under bed, you know, subwoof we were originally going to build, you know, we were, I was going to go with something like this. And I'm actually working on it up here a little bit, just trying different drivers. But anyway, we're doing a slot port with a 12. So we're going to click on this. All right, now one thing I want to tell you guys, oh, there's that Russian pop-up. Make sure when you're uh, in YouTube and you're watching this, here's my last video. If you go right here, let's hit play. It may be a little fuzzy. So go right here and make sure. Now I had auto selected earlier and sometimes auto will go to 1080. I just put it at 720 this time just to show you sometimes it, it won't automatically go to 1080, especially maybe your connection is not the fastest. Select 1080 and it's going to clear right up. It's going to be very, very clear. These videos where I'm doing on my computer should be nice and crisp and that don't matter when you're trying to follow me on the screen. And there's Michael Youth Man spamming my video here. Uh, He's a really great guy. He recently gave me a shout out in one of his videos on episode seven, which is aligning subs with the mini DSP. He's uh, been really, really helpful for me, you know, getting on YouTube and answered a lot of questions I had. We are uh, just a really, really great guy. But anyway, enough about that. So let's go ahead and close this tab. Oh, you don't need to see that yet. All right. So, all right. So here we are. The first thing we need to do because this is just a generic box, you know, we don't want our box to look like that. We need to go over to port and slot port it. We need to go ahead and put our tuning frequency in, which, if you remember, was 18.5. All right, now right here where we have port area. Now this is important. If you remember when we did the, uh, the tuning, or not the tuning, but when we did the WinISD episode last episode, you know, I told you this measurement was important. 1.25 times 15.5. You know, I had to, I knew how big I wanted the port, but that area is kind of important. You know, we need to know that for the next episode. And that's now. So we need to take it. Oh, I've already multiplied it out. 1.25 times 15.5 is 19.375. So that's our area of our port. That's actually how big the mouth of the port is. So we need to go and put in 19.375. 19.375. Alright, now it's gonna round up to 19.38. Now of course our port, you know, it's sticking way outside the box, but we're fixing to fix that. Alright, so everything on this page now looks good. The port length of course isn't right yet, but we're gonna fix that too. Subwoofer, 12 inch driver. Now the mounting depth, we can go and look at the UM12 and find out exactly what the depth is. It's close to this. I think it might be 6.5 or something. That's going to matter 
more like say the underneath the bed box, you know, because I you're trying to go as slim as possible, you know, and you can actually kind of look in there and see how close it is, you know, when you're getting a real thin box. Here it's not going to matter. And we have our woofer displacement, it's just a generic displacement. Manufacturers don't really give this information out, but a lot of times you can find it on forums, but that's going to be so close, we're just going to leave it alone. And also if you remember last episode where we altered the the box size even a quarter of a cube it didn't really change the response enough to where it's going to be noticeable so we're not going to worry too much about little things like that that port is really what's going to eat up the most volume and we're going to have some bracing too but that's not going to eat up nothing like the port does all right so let's go to box okay now internal volume we know we need 3.5 hit enter and boom okay now our port is inside our box it looks much better all right so if we go down underneath here you'll see it's telling us how big all of our panels need to be now for some reason this program I don't know if you noticed at the beginning all of them are laid flat I don't know why you know maybe Russia they're all laid flat maybe they put TVs on top couches heck I don't know I have no idea why you can't turn these right side up. I can do it like this, but then I can't spin it back around. So we're going to have to just kind of envision it and realize this is the top and bottom down here, but this is actually the sides. So it's a little backwards. And I'll take it and fix this. You know, I'll make a cutout sheet and uh, post it at the end of the video, you know, with this kind of fixed more to our needs instead of, you know, everything kind of backwards and confusing. So uh, anyway, let's keep on going. You'll see we have a lot of oddball measurements right here. So we're going to be trying to get our box to look like we want and get some, you know, better fractions like halves and three quarters so we can follow the cut sheet easier. All right. So like we can change the width here. Now the depth is not going to be changeable. And the reason is because if you could change all three of these, you would be changing your internal volume. So it's going to you know, depending on what you put here, the program is going to use this to keep the internal volume what you want it to be. Now, one thing about that, we haven't, we have to remember, we're going to have a double baffle right here, front panel. There's a double selection, but it won't let me select it. And what that means by double baffle, the baffle is where the speaker is mounted on any speaker, you know, loudspeakers or subs, everything. This is the baffle. We want two layers of wood here not one so we're gonna have another piece inside this box and that's actually what it, the driver is gonna mount to we're gonna cut this hole as big as you know the outside of the driver so it'll sit down into it and it'll sit on that inner piece of wood it's gonna give it a nice clean look instead of just the driver just sitting on the outside of the box you know we want it to look a little more professional but now one thing we're not gonna do is use MDF you know this box is gonna be made out of MDF and, but not regular MDF, not the stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot, unless you're lucky and your Lowe's or Home Depot has cabinet grade MDF. If you've ordered anything from like DIY Sound Group and noticed how nice the MDF is, and I mean it's so dense and it routers like a dream, you know it's not quite as porous or not that regular MDF is porous, but it's just much, much like finer particles, just a lot higher grade. And I mean it's very evident. That's what we're going to be using. Now I've got a source around here where I can get it for like $35 a sheet, so it's not really expensive compared to regular MDF. It's about the same price, it's just a much better product. But when you're screwing into it, it doesn't hold, or it doesn't hold well. Especially if you ever have to remove the driver and then reinstall it, they're really easy to strip out. So I'm not going to suggest that you, you know, use... MDF for the inner baffle. We're going to use three quarter inch plywood. And plywood is very popular. Birch is really popular for like building speakers. But for this, we're just using it for the inner layer. So just some good three quarter inch plywood. And the screws are going to suck down so much, you know, have so much more strength. And they're not going to strip out. And you can remove the screws and put them back in. It's just a much, much better material when you're screwing something down. All right. So because we're going to do that, we're going to bump this right here up to 3.6 because it doesn't account for that internal baffle. And that's also going to help us with our bracing. We're going to have a little bit of bracing in there too. And But of course, we could just forget about it. We know we could still lose a quarter of a cube on this box and not be a big deal. All right, one other thing. 
Okay, our three quarter inch MDF, we're gonna go with three quarters of an inch. So we'll put 0.75 right there. Now three quarters, uh, three quarter MDF varies. It's not always exactly three quarters of an inch, but now if you measure it with your tape, it's gonna look like it is because it's so close. You know, when you're talking about hundredths of an inch, it's not something we can read with our tape measure. All right, now this sub's still a little bit tall. So, but remember, it's the width on here. So we need to go ahead and let's make it let's make it a little shorter. Let's try 20 inches. All right, see that's made it's looking better, but it's making it longer. 33 inches is kind of long. Now this height right here, that's not very good. We want it to be a little bit wider than that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Our depth is 27.5. Okay, but our driver, see our driver is not really centered on that front baffle, so we need to shift it over a little bit. So, see that's on subwoofer tab here. So this offset, we can shift it around. Let's go ahead with a negative one, hit enter. All right, see it moved it that way a little bit. Now that actually looks good. It's centered on the baffle. We're gonna have our port underneath it. That looks really good. Now let's look at the port real quick. So we got 36.99. Now remember WinISD came up with 39.77. So according to when ISD it needs to be a little bit longer. Now remember, we can go a couple inches either way. It's not going to make a huge difference in our response. But we're still going to stick with when ISD. So this back piece of port right here, we're going to make it a little bit longer than it's saying. It's this one right here, 9.5 by 15.5. So we'll make it like 2 and 3 quarters longer. So we're going to be, you know, around 12 inches or so for that back panel instead of the 9.5 that they show there. So it's going to come out to about here. So anyway, that's our that's our box. We're pretty much done. And I already kind of I've worked on this box already a little bit. You'll notice everything is nice and you know down to uh, halves and three quarter cuts. You know this one right here, 0.76. I mean that's going to be three quarters. This one, 0.49. That's nine and a half. Of course, we're going to alter that a little bit. But what you can do is, like if it's not quite where you want it, like say it's it's giving you, you know, cuts that are like, you know, 0.42 and just not quite, you know, where you want them, you can adjust, let's see, you go to box, you can adjust the, let's see, where am I at here, the volume. You can say, you can try 5.8, let's see what happens when we go to 5.8. Okay, see we're at 9.3 and 6.8, you know, and that's actually how I got the 3.6. I knew I wanted a little bit bigger than 3.5, you know, just to account for like a little bit of bracing and stuff. So I just kind of crept it up until I got to 3.60 oh, and then, you know, slowly those numbers, you know, got closer to where I wanted them. And you know, we've got some nice even numbers to cut to. And that's it. So that's going to be our box. And we are 20 inches wide, which is actually how tall we are. Let's look at a PB4000. I've got it saved right here. Let's look at their, the size, just to kind of compare. Here, the height is 23. You say 23 inches for the height. And what will be 20 inches? That's our width here, 20 inches. And, so, and then its height, which is how wide it is, is 17 inches. I know it's kind of confusing because it's backwards. All right, this one was 20 inches wide, so we're at 17 inches. So we're a little bit slimmer, and that's not really a bad thing. Help it fit 27 and a half deep and 27.7 deep. We're very comparable to the size of like a PB4000, a tad bit thinner. So, uh, you know, that could be a good thing. And it's a good looking box. You know, this is going to be centered on the baffle, and, you know, it's, it's going to look good. It's a nice design. I like it. All right, so now we need to order our parts. And I'm fixing to do that as soon as I get done making this video. And we're going to go with this setup right here. The Dayton, of course, the UM12. And we're going to use the 
Bash 500 watt digital plate amp. And that's 500 watts RMS. So you know, as long as it's that's actual specs and hopefully expected well, it's going to have peaks. You know, over 500 watts. But we know we really don't want to go over 500 watts. You know, that's 600 watts is pretty much our limit. But now you may be saying, well, you know, the SVS, you know, it's got more power than that. Well, let's look at it real quick. Okay, so 1,200 watts continuous. We're at 5. So, I mean, really, that's barely over 3 dB more headroom. But remember, we're ported. This is a hybrid subwoofer right here where they can plug those ports. So when you plug these ports, you have to go into the plate amp and configure it as a sealed subwoofer. So it's going to bake in EQ to boost it up. It's using a tremendous amount of power, a lot more power than we're going to be using on our subwoofer right here. And this is without any EQ applied at all. So we're going to require much less power to play at you know, similar outputs. And we did that in the last episode where we compared a seal to a port and looked at how much power we needed. I think it was at 20 hertz. You know, the sealed needed, uh, I think, four times the power or something like that. It, it was a tremendous amount of difference. So we need to keep that in mind. We're not going to require a lot of power. And in my old room, you know, here's a picture of my old room. And here's my old subs while I was building them. And that right there is a dolly in the picture. You know, these use some HT18s made by Stereo Integrity. And I probably only fed them. 150 watts or so at reference because they were ported and didn't need EQ. They were very, very easy to drive to extremely loud levels. I mean, they could play louder than I could handle it. And I mean, I was scared the room was going to fall apart. So I never even pushed them and I barely even worked my amp. So just keep that in mind. You know, even though this doesn't look like a super powerful amplifier, we're going to have plenty of power to get the performance that we looked at in WinISD. And then we're going to take it, we're going to run compression measurements. And we're going to compare it to database and compare it to subs like the PB4000 and PB13 and see how it stacks up. So, I mean, you know, this is a, what does this sub here cost? Oh, so this is a $1,900 sub. And, I mean, of course, it is, it's a very nice looking sub. And it does have the built-in EQ on the, you know, the uh, plate amp. But we're going to disregard that because we're going to be using something like a mini DSP, which basically blows away any of the onboard EQ that that, you know, SBS sub has. I mean, by a mile, it's not even, it's not even close. So we're going to disregard this and not really look at that as really some big plus because a mini DSP two by four is 200 bucks and we'll do four subs all from the seat you know of our couch we can work everything control all the subs get them all time aligned you know in episode seven as you guys know we'll walk you through that so but it is a nice looking sub it has a very nice finish so you pay for that too so these are good subs but for the diy guys out there maybe that's a little too much to spend you know it's hard for me to spend it because i can build the sub much cheaper so you know so for this sub we're at 450 bucks and we still have to buy you know some wire you know, for the inside to run from our driver to our amp. Some screws, and I'm going to put all that stuff down in the uh, description. You're going to see everything you need to build this sub, and we're going to have the cut sheet at the end of the video. So it's going to be, uh, you know, probably a $500 sub when we're all said and done, not including your finish. Now, if you want to use something like Duratex, which is popular for subwoofers, you know, it kind of gives it like a pro look, you know, rough texture. You know, you can do that. That's really easy to do, but, you know, $74. But that's not that bad, really, because it's a nice look. But if you want something like a veneer, you know, like, uh, well, I'll show you in a minute some veneer I had on some of my old speakers I built. You know, that cost you a little, well, actually, it doesn't really cost you more. For $74, you can buy some nice veneer, you know, if you know where to look online, enough to do this subwoofer. So that's an option. You could also do a... A base coat clear coat. I think that's what I'm going to do. Now I want you guys to leave some comments down below and let me know what you think. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and place the order here in just a few minutes. I'm going to add the screws I want. And uh, actually I've already got the screws on hand, but I'm going to put them down in the link so you can you know, get everything that I'm going to be using on this build and build it yourself. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this one. The next episode you're going to see me cutting up some wood and we're going to start building our enclosure. So don't forget to subscribe and then hit that notification bell because if you don't hit the notification bell, you're not going to be notified when the next videos come out. And we all know you don't want to miss these videos, especially during this downtime where everyone's in quarantine trying to stay safe right now. 
So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I will see you all for the next one. Take care.